I don't know how I'm going to get through another day being cooped up in this place. Well, it's better than a jail cell, wouldn't you say, Mrs. Whitney? Oh, yeah. I can be grateful for something. I'm not in a cell, but for who knows how long. I am going crazy! I mean, if I, if I don't know if there's going to be a trial, I have to stay in this place. Half the town thinks that I'm in jail. The other half doesn't care. If I wasn't on the television, and I don't even want to think about Geraldine deserting me. It's none of my business, of course, but I think it's very unfair for her to leave town when you're in this trouble. Well, I can't wait until she gets back from Washington because I'm going to throw her out of the house again. Now, what time is it? Almost noon. Good. Why don't you go out and get the television set? I think there's supposed to be a news broadcast at noon. Maybe I'll be on that one. I really think it's too early in the day if you'd be so upset. Why don't you watch the 6 o'clock? I am going to be just as upset at 6 o'clock as I will be at noon. So will you go get the television before the broadcast is over? Yes, Mrs. Whitney. And if I'm not on this one, I am going to call Nicole personally. I don't... What's your problem? We can't stall her any longer. She wants to watch the news now, and she wants to watch it this minute. Well, go get the set. Plug it in. Don't just stand there. incident is asked to call the special police number 555-1717. All right, Nicole, get on with it. After several months of meetings and public hearings on the Washington East development plan, the Monticello Community Board voted 19 to 5 in favor of today's resolution. Despite its determination that the property should be returned to productive use, the board resolved that the development plan as it now stands is not properly integrated with the community that it would overly develop the property site and have an adverse impact on the area. Who Russell E. Kerwin, spokesman for the board, added that the present plan Boring. gives back too little in its proposed package. The resolution has been forwarded to the City Planning Commission, which now is expected to veto the proposed zoning changes. For the latest on that story, we go to Hugh Adams at the Criminal Court Building. Well, the sensational case of the alleged murder of actress Jinx Avery by Monticello socialite Raven Whitney is moving another step forward in the legal process today. Within the hour, the grand jury will convene to determine the extent of the evidence against the widow of the late Skylar Whitney. Their deliberations will decide whether or not Mrs. Whitney will have to face a trial by jury. A spokesman from the district attorney's office says that their evidence is strong enough to warrant the charge of first-degree murder and the subsequent trial. However, Mrs. Whitney's lawyer, Bennett Matthews, has a different point of view. Mr. Matthews, what do you think will be the outcome of the grand jury's deliberations here today? Well, of course, I'm no clairvoyant, but I do not believe that this case will ever come to trial. And on what do you base that statement? My client's innocence, of course. I'm sure that once the grand jury has reviewed the evidence, that they will conclude that my client has been a victim of circumstance. And as for the prosecution, they will not be able to establish anything except accidental death. He's Mr. Wonderful. Matthews, there are many sensational aspects to this case and a good deal of notoriety surrounding the people. If you're wrong and the grand jury does decide to indict your client, would you ask for a change of venue? I'm not going to answer that question because it assumes that this case will go to trial. And I'm sure that Raven Whitney is innocent and that the grand jury, once they have reviewed all of the evidence, will not hand down an indictment. Lord, I Thank hope you, you're listening. So which will it be? Indictment or exoneration? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, Raven Whitney, presently free on bail, can only await the outcome of the grand jury's deliberations. This is Hugh Adams, WMON TV News. Hey, Jim, these TV cameras are great. You know that? I mean, they're nice and small and compact. They're kind of heavy, though. Oh, oh, let's get this. All right, here we go. All right. Hector, what? What? You got the cap on the lens. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yes. Looking good, Jimmy. 
You're really an electronics genius. You know hey, that? I was thinking the exact same thing. And you're modest. Hey, you gotta admit I did a pretty good acting job, too. You know, you did. <laughs> I was really impressed. But the thing I was most impressed with was the way you edited that, that newscast into the cassette so that Raven could see it. Yeah, tricks to every trade, my boy. Tricks to every trade. And listen, you did a mighty fine job yourself there, Mr. Matthews. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Yes, well, I think that Raven Whitney is innocent, and I do not think that the grand jury will hand down an indictment. Very good. That wasn't acting. That was the truth. Hector, there's no grand jury. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> Hector, don't be vague. This is getting dangerous now. I mean, we've got to get into reality about this. This thing's got to stop, and soon. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, you don't know. This thing has gone too far, too fast. I've lost control of it. I mean, the amount of steps that we're taking in order to cover our lies is incredible. And look, how much money did this equipment cost? We just rented it. That costs money, doesn't it? Hey, relax. It's only a couple of hundred bucks. A couple of hundred dollars a day? I mean, that's how we're spending Sid's money. The 10,000 is almost gone. Yeah, but we've got Mrs. Whitney's hundred grand now, remember? I knew it. I knew it. You guys are spending that money. You got to spend money to make money, Jimmy. Everybody knows that. It's called priming the pump. Hector, that money is stolen. Stolen? Now, what kind of word is that? I mean, we just borrowed it for a little while, huh? Wrong! We're spending it! She'll get it back. All she has to do is show up in court. Hector, you guys swore to me she'd get that money back. And if she doesn't... If she doesn't what, huh? We all go to jail. Grand larceny. All right, all right, all right, all right. She'll get back every dime. All we're gonna do is keep the interest that it earns. You never did tell me. How are you gonna earn that interest? Oh, there are ways. You just leave that to the Wilson brothers. I'd rather leave it to the devil himself. I'm taking a walk. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, studio. Oh, hi, Ernie. Yeah, hello, Heck. Hey, great day for the races, huh? Oh, yeah, it should be a good, fast track. Listen, is uh, Smiley there? Uh, no, 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 he's not back yet, but, uh... Gave me the list uh, to read to you. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. He's got uh, a Bride's Revenge in the first. Yeah. Murphy's Dream in the second. Mm -hmm. Then comes Hyo Silver. Seven Year Itch. Oh, she's been scratched. Oh, the itch has been scratched? Oh, oh, oh. Well, then forget the fourth. Okay, we've got uh, Nick's Follies in the fifth. Mm -hmm. Baby's Booties. Trail Away. Mm -hmm. And Blue Lightning in the eighth. For how much? Uh, Smiley wants to put a grand on each across the board. Hey, what did your rich uncle die of something? <laughs> a rich aunt, my friend. But she didn't die. She's quite healthy. As a matter of fact, I think she's going to be around for a long, long time. We find Grace. Archie Harmon is a solid professional. I think so too, Dad. How many pennies in the showing altogether? Twenty-eight. Hmm. It's going to make it a bit tight for wall space, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it might. I may have to cut it to 25. It'll break Archie's heart. He'll be here for the opening, I trust. Well, I'm not sure he's going to make it now. He won't fly, you know. He says he doesn't want to put his body in jeopardy unnecessarily. Uh, how is it he doesn't mind putting it in jeopardy with a daily <laughs> quart of bourbon? <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? I think you're going to have to readjust the lighting on this one, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm having an electrician come tomorrow. He'll put ah. another light track in. That should do it. Why, Mrs. Cavanaugh, this <laughs> is a pleasure. I hope you're here to gather material for the gallery's new showing. Is that what you have in mind? Among other things, Mr. Endicott. Good. Have you met my daughter, Grace? Yes, yes I have. Yes. Hello, Nicole. Grace. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. I believe this is your first visit here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I've been meaning to come since you opened. But I hear it is going quite well. Yes, yes, beyond all my expectations, really, considering the short time we've been open. Well, that is wonderful. I'm very proud of the way Grace has handled the business here. 
At first, I thought it would be, well, just a plaything, but she proved me wrong. My father's prejudice, Nicole. Well, I'm sure he has a right to be. We're so happy you and your family are able to join us at our party next week, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Well, it was so kind of you to include us. We're looking forward to it. Good. Your husband's a doctor, I believe? A surgeon? No, he's a general practitioner. Ah. Oh. And your sister, Jody Travis, and her young friend, Gavin Wiley, weren't they associated with the Whitney Dance Theater for a time? Yes, they were. I remember, because I was most interested in Skylar Whitney's attempt to establish a resident dance company in Monticello. I was very disappointed when the company closed. It could have been a great cultural asset for the city. Is Jody still interested in the dance? No, actually, she's interested in theater now. Oh! <laughs> Television, too. She is going to be the new hostess for the children's show on WMON. Well, that's remarkable for a girl so young to take a challenge such as that. Don't you think so, Grace? Absolutely. <sighs> Mr. Endicott, your knowledge of my family puzzles me. Oh? That's not odd, really. You all have been in the public eye, you know, at one time or another. Yes, I know that, but... I was wondering how you knew about the death of my sister's mother, Leonie Travis. There had been no mention of it publicly, I'm sure, and I've been wondering how you knew. Isn't that strange? I'm just trying to think. I can't really remember just how or when it came to my notice. Grace, can you? Um, well, uh, uh, yes, yes. Um, I phoned your home recently when you were in Springfield, and I spoke to your housekeeper. She mentioned it. Perhaps you'd like an advanced look at the new showing. The artist is Archie Harmon. Maybe you know his work. I think the way he handles color is marvelous. Don't you? Yes. Incredible. That broadcast looked completely authentic. I defy anyone to guess it wasn't the real thing. You are a genius, Spencer. All I did was put the tape in the machine, or Hector Wilson put the whole thing together. Those people are really clever, aren't they? Mrs. Whitney never guessed it was last night's broadcast. Well, she did see the 6 o'clock news, but she missed the late night edition. Oh, a stroke of luck. It's just a good thing you didn't leave in Nicole Cavanaugh's sign-off. She usually says good night. Oh, no, they would have caught that. Hector is very thorough. Well, he'd better be, Nora. Otherwise, our own necks will be in a noose. If Mrs. Whitney finds out what's really happening to her... You're so hard to figure, Spencer. I still don't understand why you got into this. The money. Well, that's a relief to know you're human, after all. Oh, that's right, Nora. <clears throat> I knew your idea of being human would have to do with being greedy. It's the prime mover, Spencer. Didn't you know that? Or did you think it was love? <laughs> I was expecting... Uh, you... you were expecting someone else? Yeah. Frankly, I didn't expect to see you again after you were at my apartment the other night with your lady friend. Well, she, uh... she's not my lady friend. She used to be my nurse. Now, she's a friend. And she's helping me get back what belongs to me. Hey, this is really interesting. Well, I guess I wasn't much help, was I? No. I'm afraid there's very little I can do about that. You see, what I told you was the truth. And all the questions that I asked the other Skylar Whitney, he was able to answer. You were able to answer none. I mean, how do you explain that? Well, I can explain why I couldn't answer the questions as to why he could. No, I'm afraid I can't explain that. Oh, that's right. You had a head injury. Rather a convenient alibi for any lapses in memory, I'd say. But I'm sorry for taking up your time. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to be rude. I don't know how to react to you. Everything about you is a question mark for me. And this isn't the first time in my life that I've been so puzzled by someone. What do you mean by that? I mean that there was a man 
who was a patient at my father's clinic in Lucerne, a war veteran who was having plastic surgery, and we became very close one summer. I cared a lot about him, even though I never saw what he looked like. You never saw what he looked like, even after the surgery? No. At the end of the summer, I went back to school, and I never heard from him again. I was very hurt. What else happened? Well, a few months ago, uh, someone shows up in Monticello with the same name, claiming to be that man. I didn't know how to react to him either. Was he the same man? No, as a matter of fact, he wasn't. He fooled me for a while. He had the same name and interest and background, but he was not the same person. And now you think that you might be seeing another imposter. Oh, hi. Uh, um, Jim Diedrichson, this is... Uh, never mind. Excuse me. Boy, that guy looks familiar. Yeah, doesn't he? that television set. Yes, ma'am. Spencer, did you see the noon broadcast of the news? No, I didn't. My lawyer was on. And he was talking about the case. I see. And he said that the grand jury was going to meet today, and maybe it would be all over soon. Yes. Maybe it will be. Studio. Yeah, hello, Hank. It's Ernie. Oh, hey, Ernie. How you doing? All right. Hey, uh, Smiley, not back yet. Ah, no, no, not yet. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, look, I, I think I got one of those nags of Smiley's wrong on the betting sheet today. Uh, just to make sure, what horse did he have in the fifth again? Oh, oh, here, here. Let me check the last one. What, what race was that now? Fifth race. Fifth race. Okay, yeah. we've got Nick's Follies. That's right. Gee, I'm glad I checked. I had him down for fade out. <laughs> Listen, thanks. I'll talk to you. Okay, okay. bye-bye, Ernie. Right. Oh, what's this? Oh, copy for second news broadcast. Gee, my brother really ought to be a writer. Let's see. Open with reporter Hugh Adams on camera. Hey, that's me. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast for an important announcement. The grand jury has just indicted Raven Whitney for murder. In the first degree. Oh. 